Hello and welcome to another episode of Commander Fodder. So this is the Apocalypse Theme Deck episode. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go through the theme deck. So I've, as you, if you've watched the previous video, uh, you'll probably gather I have already picked one. But uh, I'm just going to go and show you what's in the uh, what's in the choice of theme decks for the Apocalypse set. And we're going to be using this then to... Uh, act as a seed for our deck. I've also added some additional cards and you'll see why in a moment uh, as my seed and I, I I don't think I've removed anything but I'll, I'll double check apart from obviously duplicate copies of cards. So uh, again uh, four decks in uh, the set in Apocalypse so we have a Burial which is um, a zombie based deck we've got uh, Phyrexian are Arena in there. So there's obviously some graveyard shenanigans going on. And do we have the full Phyrexian complement? No, no we don't. Now, <clears throat> the other thing um, you'll notice is because we're on the third set of the block, you're going to see cards in here that aren't exclusively Apocalypse. That's just what happens in a theme deck. We've got other stuff like Chromatic Sphere for fixing. Again, we're going to see obviously not strictly the right artwork or right cards uh, in terms of the period. This particular rollover that's in here just pops up with the most recent um, version of the card, I think. We've got a Pandemonium deck which features the Penumbra's Vertical Cycle, uh, which if you've seen the episode of set musings you'll know exactly what i mean and you will have seen this so uh, that will that would have obviously gone out before this episode and you can see here oh yeah that's something else to notice so most of these decks are at least i believe at least three colors and there's some colour fixing shenanigans going on as well as we saw in a previous set for this block things can get a little confusing in terms of the mana base and the casting cost because there are a number of cards for obvious reasons that have a way of either generating mana or filtering mana uh, and they can also be creatures as well so yeah <clears throat> sometimes the mana base it, or what you see in terms of the land base isn't always reflective of in terms of what colours can be played. This one, however, of course, has basic lands from each of the five colours. It's basically a primarily green deck and then it's splashing the other basic lands for the colours. You'll also see we've got things like Nomadic Elf as well, which obviously relies on green. Or one of the green to generate mana of any colour. There's two rares, Last Stand and Penumbra, Penumbra Worm. Then we've got Swoop, which looks like it's a Forest Island deck. So this looks like this might just be two colour, but again, don't always assume that. We do have a Chromatic Sphere in here for fixing. So you can see there's, and you can see look, there's black in one of the activation costs. So, you know, that's obviously a consideration here. And something in here, obviously we've got the chromatic sphere, sphere that could uh, generate that, that black mana, which you wouldn't have from our lands. Oh, there we go. We've got another ball elf as well. So yeah, like I said, that was a thing in the set. And then Whirlpool, which again appears to be oh, was that blue red. We do have again two chromatic spheres. And do we have anything that's off colour? We may be okay in this deck. Yep. 
think we're okay. But as you saw from the set musings, there's also all sorts of wedge business going on in terms of the colour ply, uh, because the set was, or the the previous two sets in the block, allied colours were a thing. In this set, it was enemy colours, and as a consequence, when you get three colours and you're trying to play to those strengths with the allied colours, you're going to see tend to see shards, and for the enemy colours, you're going to tend to see wedges when you've got three colours. So yeah, let's go back up. So the deck I actually chose, if you don't know already, is uh, Pandemonium. I just wanted to see what would happen if I tried five five colour. As I've mentioned before, when I look at these, I look at the rares. I try and play as many of the rares as I can. If there is um, a legend, then I will uh, remove, I will play to that legend's colour identity and obviously its theme and remove any of the other cards that don't fit in with the colour identity. If it's like this where there isn't a legend in here, I'll attempt to stay true to the colour in the deck and see where the theme of the deck pulls me because again we're going to be using the inbuilt algorithm to get card suggestions which will then, in my case, remind me <laughs> of what might be useful to play in the deck. Uh, and obviously I have to pick a commander that's going to slide in here. So because we're playing that, uh, was it five colour sorcery? Is it lands last stand? We, we want to be playing a five colour general. There's a number of different ones we could play. But what I've been tending to do <coughs> is if, if I can, if there's a legend in the set as a whole or in the block as a whole, or particularly the set in this case, which is in those colours, then I'll try if I can to choose that as a general. So here's the Pandemonium deck before any shenanigans. So you've just seen the page for that, but this is it in, inside of Architect. And as I pointed out in my preamble, we've got uh, heavy green going on here. Plus additional ways within green, as you've seen, of fixing this five colour deck. Now it would appear that what's happening here is we have green splashing the other five colours for certain key cards and also last stand. Interesting, we've got tribal flames in here. So obviously that helps there. We get five five damage. And we have a split card, life and death, which we did actually see in the Deck Dirtle episode. Where I built that slightly weird and green black. Was it blue was the the splash colour? And no surprise to see lay of the land in here. Guys balance. And as I mentioned before, we might see cards in here that aren't like Fertile Ground, for instance, that aren't from uh, Apocalypse. They're from the block as a whole. And I don't see it here, but uh, occasionally in these decks, it's not beyond the realms of possibility to have something that's come in from the core set at the time. I'm not seeing it here, but that, you know, I have seen theme decks with that, with core set cards in them. So, uh, yeah. So here, so obviously I've gone through, taken out all the multiple copies of cards and I've kept the rest. And I'm just going to see where that goes. Now, there were some things that I wanted to play because of, of what was going on here. Um, I just wanted to make sure they were in there because I have a habit of forgetting once I start going with the algorithm, it's real easy to just let the algorithm do its thing. So I decided to add additional cards. These won't probably affect the seeding that much. They're mainly there for um, mana fixing, although there is one. So I'm going to start off my mana base is going to be around 35 36 lands and first of all i'm going to pull in 
the tricolour lands from was it Conflux from uh, the Shards block, so from the Shards of Alara block. But I'm also going to put in a command tower as well, and and other utility lands that may come up. But that's my sort of starting point. We might have to go down, obviously, adding certain mana rocks in as well. But I just wanted to keep it relatively straightforward in terms of the additional seed cards. The other thing is I've got this this new um, uh, command tower from. I'm going to have to remember what it's called now. Commander Collection Black. And let's just put those in and we will decrease each of these by one. Here's a 36, I'm happy with that. So we're, as we're in this set, I couldn't resist. I'm going to put a legacy weapon in here as well. Goes in our artifact slot. We don't have any artifacts yet, interestingly enough. So we will open up an artifact slot. We've got a good old legacy weapon. Chromat, Chromat's our commander. Just pick that as the commander because it's in the set. And it's interesting utility commander. And we'll just see what themes get suggested for this. Um, you can see we've got a number of Penumbra creatures. So those were the ones that if they die, they come back with a, a black version of, of the card. We have a mana fixing there. I think most of the... Oh, there's our Stratodon. So we get... Yeah, 5-5-5. Five, five, five. That was in there. Herborg Elf for green, blue, black. Fixing... And I'm sure there's a whole load of other things we could do here to, um, you know, fixing three colours within the, the five colours that the deck needs. Not surprising, we've also got a harrow. But a lot of these cards, obviously, in one way or another, play to the fact we're playing five colour. So it's going to be cool to see where this takes us. We've got reasonably old commander, so um, the... The algorithm in Architect, we won't have to rely on the EDH rec one. I tend to prefer to use this because just I seem to get a wider number of choices. So that way, okay, Bird of Paradise. Yeah, what the hell? Stick that in there. What's suggesting a psychosis crawler? Oh, that's cool. Five colour stuffs. And that's interesting in this deck. So it could end up as just five colour utility. <laughs> yeah. Utility and interesting creatures. Anyway, before I do go too far down the creature rabbit hole. I just want to look at some mana rocks. Okay, so soul ring, yep, commander's sphere. Ooh, I like that. Let's play a dock still in go. Do I want no probably not? already got legacy weapon in here but it's a different uh, it's not a 10th edition so that's why it's appearing that it, it doesn't when you use this suggestion tool you have to be a bit careful but you're going to figure out if you accidentally add two cards a different artwork oh yeah let's just play that <laughs> let's have an alternative win condition you may cast spells that have cycling we'll just play some fun stuff I think um, hmm. You have to be a bit careful. 
beautiful here. How many artifacts do I want to play? See, one choice is to play like, I don't know what the term is, but like meshed colour artifacts. So, you know, you play uh, one of each of the two colour artifacts, but that doesn't mean you end up playing a ton of artifacts or one of each of the cards that generate three colour, um, three colours. So I'm going to be careful there. that in there. There's coalition relic in as well. Oh, a nice green scepter. Wow. I should put I should shroud up my um commander. Yeah, there's so many cool cards that I really like. Love things like Frexian Metamorph. Oh, wow. No, do we want to be burning? I don't know if we want Birthing Pod. Interesting. Of course, there's. Artifacts as well. Of course, the other thing I could do is play the Mana fixing artifacts from the set as well. Which, right, let's just stick with that for the moment. Hmm. So we're going to have a load of instant speed stuff we can choose from because we're playing five colours. So let's just see. Oh. What do we want? Yeah, there's all the tutor stuff. Wow. I think it's... So I'm just having trouble remembering. I should... We should put Vindicate in here, seeing as that's in the set. Just because we can. I know it's not instant speed, but um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to put a counter spell in. Cyclonic Riff. Uh, whatever. It's 54 bucks, who cares? Uh, what would be cuter? In his swords. Some creature utility. Oh, okay. I like the fact that it's from the from the block. Kind of charms we could potentially play here. I don't know if I want to be entombing anything. Like 
There's some real interesting charms here. That would be quite cool. Let's mess with anybody that's got any graveyard shenanigans going. Don't know why we'd be destroying target clerics, but never mind. And I should play a terminate. How are we doing? Seven sorceries. Okay. Let me see. What else we've got? Of course, I could play stuff that echoes the ability on Chromat. That's another thematic idea. Target non snow creature. It's an interesting removal. All right. Oh, I was in the instance, not the. Wow, it's gone a bit over the top there. That would be crazy. Got where I was, but anyway, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I don't know if I want to play 15 instants. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Oh, and I won't be playing two arrows. I'd already got that. I want that. I don't need to play that, I don't think. Okay. It's cool. Maybe I'll play two. Six damage will be dealt to target creature or player this turn is dealt to another. Okay. Interesting redirect spell.
come from. What's a plane shift spell good? Hmm. Yeah, we'll leave that in. And the closest charm, I suppose we should make sure we have the uh, plane shift on. I'm feeling about here with, with the artwork and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave it like that for the moment. Alright, where are we? 79. Let's see what we've got on the... We'll have a look at some enchantments, I think. And some planeswalkers. Right. What have we got then? Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card. Okay. Mystic study, yes, please. Yeah, propaganda, so we got all sorts of stuff we can play. Yeah. Ooh. That's cool. Let's do that because again we just we're in you know we've got all these colors Okay, spells and ability your your opponent's control card. Ooh, that's nasty. There we go. Looks like fun. I mean, with five colours, there's just so much stuff I could potentially play. Now we start just putting in those creatures.
It's interesting, it's suggesting a lot of cycling stuff. Dick's going to be a bit over the place. Let's play five colour whenever possible. So I'm just looking for interesting creatures with utility. That's what I'm going for. And because I'm playing five colours, I can just pretty much choose anything. This deck is just going to be so, in some respects, so chaotic. Of course, these are in the block.
Right. Have we got any interesting angels with uh, ability? Oh dear, we've gone over. <laughs> right. Uh, what a crazy deck. Yeah, I must admit, it's a bit of a mess. Um, I can see why it's suggesting what it's suggesting, um, but there's just so many choices here that uh, I could really just go down any avenue. Um, it's basically all just utility creatures and stuff that has a big impact on the board. I'm sort of overshot a bit by three cards here. can take out I don't really want to take anything out actually it's just too many crazy things in here permanent each card ways of fixing for mana. Right, I need to remove a couple of cards. I do not have repopulate. was in the deck originally but I think I'm probably better off taking that out. I do 
I like the modal aspect of these charms. Okay, we're there. So, <laughs> yeah. This is pretty wacky. What the hell's my mana base look like? Uh, I suppose it's not too bad. It's, there's quite a bit of green in there. As, well, the de deck had a lot of green in it. So, I suppose what I'd want to do is... I really want to drop. Mm. I suppose I could. Any cars with double? Well, I see most of them do. So. Let's have a look. Or maybe something like that. Shit. <laughs> I don't know how much it matters to get it. that close mm. yeah we are playing quite a bit of green utility stuff so maybe it is better to do that okay so let's see what this looks like if we do a few draws okay <laughs> That's funny, we have no, no green. Well, that wasn't very good. Okay. So forest, so turn one forest, turn one layer of the land, okay. Or we could get just get our burgeoning out early. This, this looks cool. I don't think we're going to have any trouble with mana. Although we don't seem to be hitting many basic lands here. Something looks wrong. Let me have a look. It's funny, the deck's called Pandemonium. Yeah, see that? What's going on here? This is crazy. Not that that should make a big difference, but... Okay. Well, there's our Commander Sphere. Okay. So yeah, this deck definitely lives up to its title, Pandemonium. <laughs> There's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Yeah, so I built around the deck title. Oh, that's funny.
I mean, one thing I probably could have done, um, you know, again, I was relying quite heavily on the algorithm. I could have, you know, looked at some of the main cards in um, in the set as a whole. And I'm sure there's stuff in there that would uh, would be useful. That, um, you know, would would be more in keeping with the theme of the deck, uh, with the five colours, rather than just, I suppose what I've ended up doing is um, playing cards that reflect the abilities on here to some degree. And that's the sort of suggestions it appeared to be coming up with, which is yeah interesting and shows that the algorithm does work in certain ways. So yeah, so that's what seemed to be happening was I was getting pulled to creatures which shared utility with Chroma um, in some degree or another. And of course, the, the great thing with a five color deck is you can just sit there and just pull in, you know, all your favorite creatures um, or the best, you know, if you've got a really good understanding off the top of your head of all the best creatures in every color in Magic, you can just, you know, build a five color good stu stuff deck. So it was interesting to actually see what what the algorithm would come back with. Um, one thing I didn't do, I'll see if it lets me do it. I'm just going to have a look and see what the EDH rec algorithm comes back with. I know the deck's built now, but I'm just curious to see <clears throat> what I might have missed out on if I'd use this one instead. We'll just do all card types. Okay, yeah, so the obvious things are like Arcane Signet, Cultivate, Farseek, Kadama's Reach. Obviously these, again, I could have tweaked the land base a bit more. So more suggestions to do with land base because it's five colour. And then obviously, yeah. Uh, Mana Rocks, our bird, which we got rid of. Oh, yeah, Chromatic, Orrery. Yeah. And then things like, you know, v removal and tutoring in the various colours. Oh, there was Conflux as well. I forgot about that. Oh, Reliquity, really yep, so. The usual suspects. And all the yeah, all the ult ultimatum cards. The like the possibilities are endless. And I suppose that's always going to be a problem with a five colour deck. You're always going to say, oh, I wish I, that you know, I could put this in, and then you're trying to decide what you want to put in instead. Oh yeah, th this I forgot about that altogether. Let's go back, okay, so, oh, yeah, makes sense. Huh. Yeah, some interesting suggestions there. Anyway, so uh, that was, that was rather, rather weird to, to create. I was... I didn't know what really to expect. I suppose I went into this particular episode completely open-minded. Sometimes with this, I look at the deck and go, oh yeah, I can see where that's going to go. Um, and I'll sort of play to that. With this one, I just let it ride and just see what things come up and then just go, oh yeah, I want to play that creature. So I ended up playing all these archetypes. Uh, and of course, there's you can fur go further down that. There's those um, creatures, I can't remember what set they're from, but you know, you get them into the graveyard and they give you uh give your creatures certain things um and their names have, have uh, i've forgotten about them for the moment i can't remember them so anyway there what's this doing over here oh dear this is a mess how did that yeah definitely something very very funky going on i need to put these back in these don't belong here crazy that's better. Yeah, I made the mistake there. What I should have done is exported the deck before I, I started um, started doing any play testing. I must remember to do that because it, it does go a bit wacky. Anyway, thanks once again for watching. 
and bye for now.